What's up, guys? Welcome to Stock Talk with Nico Criticos. Today, we're going to be going through some data and some statistics to find out when will stocks be going back up. So today, if we take a look at some of the indexes, the stock market's having a very great day. My account is up about 8% today. Uh, the S&P is up over 4.5% today. So just because some news came out today that inflation was slightly um, not as bad as what was what was expected. So that's the big news. It, it's not even that much of a, a beat. It was by like 0.2%. It came in a little bit better. So it's not that big of a deal. But the stocks are having a great day today. Um, but we're going to look at how long do bear markets last and how much do they normally fall before they start going back up? Um, when do they bottom? And how does it affect the different indexes? So we have the S&P 500, we have the NASDAQ, and we have the Dow Jones. The NASDAQ has been hit the hardest. The NASDAQ is down, as of yesterday, it was down 35% from its highs, as we can see right here. Um, and NASDAQ, the NASDAQ peaked on November 19th of last year, so almost a year ago. The Dow Jones has not been hit as bad. I believe it's only, I think it's 21%. Um, yeah, 22%. Um, and it and this one bottomed about what a little over a month ago, and then this one the Dow also peaked on January fourth of this year. So the timeline is a little bit different. Now the S and P is more similar to the Dow too, where the S and P peaked on January, you know, somewhere around January third, and the S and P bottomed in October, um, and it fell about what twenty five percent, right? So when we look at some of the data, so like this, this one, for example, says the average S&P decline during post-World War II recessions is about 29%. This average is skewed, though, in part due to the especially steep sell-off during the Great Recession. The median decline is around 24%. So you can use either one of those numbers. Um, I personally would include that the Great Recession into my data. So I think 29% is... Um, Maybe a better number to use, but you could use 24% if you wanted to take that one out. Um, and so the S&P is down. We just said it, it was it, it dropped 25% um, as of last month. And so that means we're right in that range. That means we hit the, we hit the average pretty much, and, or the median at least. And so that's one piece of data. The next piece of data is how long will the bear market last? So there is a lot of different um, numbers for this. This one says it's about 9.6 months, right? 289 days. But if you scroll down, you can see other ones go all the way from 16 months. This one says that they range in anywhere from one month to 1.7 years. Uh, this one says 9.6 months. This one says 388 days. Um, I've seen a bunch. I've seen everything from about, what, nine and a half months all the way to, I believe, 16 months would be the longest. So that means that that means that our NASDAQ would have either bottomed in that would be what S September of this year. That that means two months ago it would have bottomed. So that was not the case, right? Um so but let's say it's about a year. Let's say it's about a year, let's say it's 16 months. If it's 16 months, that means that we could potentially go into next you know into next spring before we see a bottom and that would be really bad so i'm hoping that's not the case i do think that this our bear market this year with this recession is a little bit different in that i think it has been a little bit more like it's it's fallen a lot faster than it normally does so i think this is going to be a shorter lived bear market and i think 2023 we're going to see a, a recession probably hit the economy a little bit worse in terms of like unemployment and stuff like that. And, you know, wages and jobs um, and then like the actual like consumer and like their purchasing power and stuff. I think that's going to probably, you know, slow down a little bit, but I think the stock market is going to go up. Um, so we'll have to see what happens. But the, the other thing I want to look at here is valuations. So these are, these are forward PE ratios for the S and P and this is trailing PE ratio for the S and P. So here we, the data is a little bit conflicting. Um, one thing to think about going into this is that the stock market is a forward-looking device, right? The stock market is looking into the future, maybe a couple months into the future, maybe even a year into the future to say, okay, what do we think, the, what do we think is going to happen to the economy in the next quarter or next 
upcoming quarters. That's what the current stock market is going to look like. That's why we saw, you know, at the big 2022 has not been that bad of a year for um, consumers, right? Savings rates are up. That's why we had super high inflation because people are still spending money that there was no, people are still definitely out there spending this year. And so that's why, even though we can have that going on in the economy, the stock market actually has been going down the entire year. So they they are not directly correlated. Um, so I don't really see that as a good argument to say, oh, we're going to have a recession next year. So that means the stock market can't go up. That's not really how it works. Um, we could also go back to like, let's see, let's say um, how about 2008. Let's do this. Let's go back. If we look at, no, let's look at the S&P in 2008. Let's do this. S&P 2008. And you can see that the recession, what, I, what I'm looking for here is that the recession, once another statistic I found is that the, the, the stock market will bottom six months into the recession. So let's see, if we go into, can we find 2008 here? Yeah. So let's see here. So stock market peaked in, uh, and this, the great recession of 2008, this was a really bad one. I don't know if ours this year is going to be that bad. It, I'm pretty, it, it fell, the indexes fell 50% and we're, we've only hit 35% for the NASDAQ. So I don't think it's going to be that bad, but this is 2200 on October, 2007, and it bottomed February, 2009. So over a year, right? That's, that's uh what, what is that? That's six, that's about that's 16 months, I think. Um, but then if we see February 2009, now let's look at 2009, um, how about when did the 2009 recession start? December 2007. That That's the, that's the stock market falling though. I mean, they kind of go hand in hand because they kind of are like, if money is being lost in the stock market, that's going to have an effect on the actual economy. But let's see, we can't, it's hard to find an exact date. And there's also like, what's different about this one is that this recession that we're in, um, it's, it's the, de like this year they've, they've been arguing about what the definition is and how you can consider a recession. So we've seen negative GDP this year, right? Two quarters of negative GDP. What we haven't seen yet is bad unemployment numbers. We haven't seen that, but we just saw like Facebook just laid off 11,000 uh, of its employees. There's tons of companies that are trying to do all they can to cut costs as much as they can. Um, one of my stocks yesterday, they had an 11% dividend. They just chopped it down to a 5% dividend now. So companies are definitely heading towards that direction going into 2023. But um even if we have even if we have a bad economy, the stock market can still go up. So if we take a look here, though, this is what's conflicting. We have we have large caps trading at pretty much fair value on average, where they trade at a sixteen. Then we have mid caps. Mid caps are down. Mid caps are at a twelve. That's pretty low compared to where they normally are. Small caps are even worse. Small caps are they. This is pretty much the lowest they can trade at this eleven point seven. So small caps need to come up. Mid caps need to come up. Um, we're probably going to see that happen pretty soon. And especially in 2023, large caps, they don't really have to move much. They could pretty much stay where they are or just move a little bit. But now what's what's interesting here is if we look at this, this is telling us the median P ratio for the S&P is 15, right? But right now we're at a 19. So by this metric, we're still a little bit, I don't want to say overvalued, but we're definitely not cheap. We're definitely not like so undervalued where we need to, you know, have a huge bull market or something. Um, that's what's interesting. So that that's what makes me think, that the real value here is is looking forward into the future because those forward PE ratios are are much cheaper. The, we have a we have we have twelve and sixteen compared to an, a nineteen point five. So, I mean, just a, these are a couple different data points to look at. Um, this I mean, the, this year has been really bad for primarily the Nasdaq, but these other indexes like the S and P and the Dow. They've they're they're somewhere in the middle. They haven't had a horrible year, but they're still in a bear market. Um, but that's just the, the data I'm looking at, and so I'm expecting 
us to have a nice bull market in 2023. I think a lot of stocks stocks out there are dramatically undervalued and we will see what happens. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.